Hi, I'm Mandy Pryor and welcome to Spotlight on Pittsburgh. Spotlight on Pittsburgh is a program about Pittsburgh's most fascinating people and what they do to make our city an amazing place to live and work. When we come back, I'll introduce you to Amy Halter, Vice President of Operations at Axion Labs. Later on in the program, Andrea Kruger of the Pittsburgh Technology Council will join us on Spotlight on Pittsburgh. See you in a moment. Our family was drifting apart until we found a connection. You have the power to change your child's life. The Boys Town National Hotline can help. And welcome back. Thanks so much for joining me today, Amy. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. So I guess the first question I'm going to ask is, can you tell me a little bit about uh, Axion Labs? Sure. Axion is a global technology firm. We have offices in the United States, Canada, India, Singapore, Malaysia, United Kingdom, and the United Arab Emirates. So we are all around the world. We en employ about 1,700 engineers globally. Wow. Um, our focus is on digital transformation with a focus on the emerging technologies. So what that means is that we can help our clients with any technology project that they might have. We think of ourselves kind of like a general contractor and that we can help them complete their entire technology project or we can just send them that Java developer who would be like that individual bricklayer to help them achieve their technology goals. So you're kind of like um, a coach behind the scenes trying to help yeah, out absolutely. Some technology. And so what, what type of projects have you done or, or that you do that you specialize in specifically? So a lot of technology projects many people don't even realize happen behind the scenes. Um, we, for example, have worked with a company who's developed a wearable technology um, that can help you be more energized or more relaxed. We work with cloud hosting companies in managing their databases. Uh, we have a local company here in Pittsburgh that we're helping to transform their databases on a retail level. A lot of the, the information was stored in a way that it could only be accessed for very specific needs and your queries had to be very direct in the information that you needed. So people are looking for more interactive databases so that they can analyze their information a lot of different ways to determine sales trends and determine the best way to achieve what they need and, and sell to their customers and also to help their clients. So, um, And how long has it been around? Axion has only been around for about seven years. So August of, or uh, sorry, February of 2011. And, um, you know, we quickly, very, very quickly grew, and we find that our clients just have this need. One of the things that makes us a little bit unique is as a consulting firm, we, we don't just send the people that they need. We really work hand in hand with them and, and become a partner with our clients to help them recognize what they need to be done. Uh, we have a, a chief technology officer. His name is Ashutos Bajor. He travels all around the world. He meets with our clients but he's also developed what we have termed the Axion Innovation Center. And that's a center where we research and we develop, we have some of our own technologies, but we also learn about what's happening in the technology world. So we're constantly on top of what's out there and what's new and coming down the pipeline so we can make those recommendations to our clients so that what they're implementing isn't going to be dated. I know that technology updates what every second of the day. <laughs> it sure does. I can't imagine you must have somebody who's just dedicated to just watching it and watching it come in every day. Yeah. Um, and so what are the typical companies that, you know, who, who would you suggest that was going to look into your company? Um, you know, what's your primary focus on sure. what type of client? It's, you know, and it's interesting because technology affects so many things of what we do in our daily lives, our work lives. Um, we typically work with product firms and IT firms directly. So while we might not be putting out the end product, we're, we're putting together the technology that powers that end product. Um, I, I'd mentioned cloud hosting. We're doing a lot in the medical sector right now. Healthcare and the way the information is stored and transmitted all needs to change um, to keep up with, with what the people need. And so there's a lot happening in, in retail and in healthcare. 
um, and we're, we're kind of in all those behind the scenes companies. And the cloud has become just integrated in everything from our email mm -hmm. to storage for even small businesses. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that can be an overwhelming task, especially with the amount of data that you'll need transferred. Mm -hmm. So might be nice to have somebody to help you it along sure the way. It sure is. That's when we find a lot of companies have a vision, but they don't know exactly how to execute it and all the pieces that they're going to need to make that puzzle be complete. So that's where we come in is we can help to guide them in their user experience, in the technical details of the project, in the timelines, in the financial investments they're going to need to make in order to make their product become a success in the market. And what do you see as the future growth of Axion Labs? You know, we are continuing to grow uh, locally as well as globally. Um, we are expecting in the Pittsburgh area to hire about 10 people or so over the course of this year. In this next month, we're hiring four already. So we have rapid growth happening. It's very exciting. Um, we had a message go out on our WhatsApp uh, about, hey, does everybody know, are we trained on this new technology that's coming out? So that continuous learning and growth um, and, and continuing to develop our own technologies as well so that we can really help to support our clients. And so um, you have a new location mm -hmm. for your headquarters, correct? Yep, Pittsburgh is our world headquarters. Pittsburgh is where Axion was founded. And what makes that really exciting for me is that I'm a Pittsburgher. And I left for a little bit and came back, but we are so thrilled to be in the Pittsburgh region and everything that's happening in, in the tech world in the Pittsburgh area is just so exciting. There's from Carnegie Mellon to Pitt and, and the startups that are coming out of the universities, the fact that Amazon might make this uh, headquarters for them as well. So there's so much happening. Pittsburgh will continue to be our headquarters, but our growth is expected to happen globally as well. That's great. I mean, Pittsburgh is, is definitely taking a step up. I, too, left and came back. And when I came back, I was like, wow, things have really upgraded around here. So, I, I mean, technology being a huge, huge uh, factor in that. So, um, have you found that it's easier to get clients around the area because of all this technology, technological growth? You know, I think that's the interesting thing is Axion's not a company that's advertised or networked a lot. And we have found that our main hub of customers have been outside of Pittsburgh. And that's one thing that we continue to talk to local clients and work to build that, that Pittsburgh business and let those clients know that we can really help them and we're right here in their backyard. So they don't need to, to go look for other companies that are out of the area because we have experts that we can send them from right here. That has a nice local touch too. It really does. <laughs> and so um, worldwide, how do you kind of, is it word of mouth that you're getting out there into all of these different er, countries? It's a lot of it is word of mouth. I think with any company you do a certain amount of cold calling and reach outs as well. Um, a lot of it comes from our networking. We have people who might be a CTO at one client that then move to another client and they want to bring us along with them. So. We've had a tremendous amount of success in that we pride ourselves on excellence, um, being detail oriented, and really focusing on being outcome oriented. We're, we're not there to send some people to tinker around and, and just collect money from the customers, but we want to build a partnership so we can help them get their product to market. And so, um, you know, you yourself, you're not one of the people behind the scenes with the um, technology in front of them doing coding, uh, but you love the technology industry. And so what can you tell people who want to get into the technology industry? You know, what can they do, even if maybe they don't want to do coding or they do? That, I, that to me, like you said, it is my, my passion. I'm very excited about it because I am not a technologist at all. I took a computer course when I was at Penn State and I think I got a C at best. <laughs> <laughs> it was not my forte. But what I think people and the youth needs to know is there are so many ways to be involved in the industry, even if you're not a techie. Um, my first background is hospitality. My second is human resources. And understanding where the talent's going to come from, um, how we're going to keep our, our people engaged when there's such a lack of jobs, 
and understanding that there is a talent shortage around. Um, whether you are a coder or whether your job will be influenced by technology, as most jobs are expected to be, there's an opportunity for everyone out there. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for coming on, Amy, and we'll have you back here in a little bit. Wonderful. Thanks for having me. Thank you. To find out more, please go to axionlabs.com. When we return, we will bring out Andrea Kruger, Director of People and Culture Initiatives at the Pittsburgh Technology Council. Sometimes it's hard to see where you're going, but you have the power to change your problems. All it takes is courage. Your life, your voice, org. Hi, and welcome back. Andrea, thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you for having me, Mandy. So, you work with the Pittsburgh Technology Council. What can you tell me about the council itself? Okay, great question. Uh, the Pittsburgh Technology Council is a nonprofit membership trade association. We were founded 35 years ago at a time when the region was suffering. Steel was dying, people were losing their jobs. It was really a sad time in this region's history. And some local industry leaders got together and said, we need to do something about this. We need to innovate, we need to come together, we need to talk about the future. And so that's how the organization was founded. And the mission today is to support the growth and development of technology companies in the region. And that really was the mission back then, and it's carried forward to this day. Especially as we were talking about how technology is growing, I'm sure the yes. council is feeling It's a the very exciting time to be in technology in Pittsburgh, for sure. And so you have something new, um, the EDGE Women's Leadership Program? Correct, yes. Well, so um, the, the council has four main focus areas for our members. Uh, the first one is business development. The second one is talent and culture. The third is government relations. And the fourth is visibility services. So these are the areas that we have found that our members come to us for support. And my responsibility at the Tech Council is to be in charge of programs and initiatives that support their people, people issues. And so we have partnered, this is the second year, we've partnered with Christy Uffelman from Align Leadership to put on a nine-month uh, intensive career development, um, leadership development program for women who are looking to take their, their career to the next step. Wow. So is it all technology based? Is that what they're learning is? The, the focus is for women who are in technology. Now they might not be technical themselves. They might work for a technology company. Um, and there's actually two opportunities. There's a nine month program, which I was fortunate enough to go through last year. I, the program started in January and went through September. And it, it really was life changing. It was focused on both personal and professional development. And um, in fact, Last year when I went through the program, I was in a membership role in the organization, which was a great job and a lot of fun. I got to you know, meet with our interesting members. And, um, but as a result of the program, I ended up getting a promotion a month and a half ago. And so, thank you. So I say that I am living proof of this program because it really does um, you know, help you build your, your confidence, your skills, your executive presence, your brand, and sort of hone in on where you are and where you wanna take your career. And so your new role, what, what exactly is your new role within the company? So my role is multifaceted, um, but one of the top priorities is to help our companies attract and retain talent. And so we have a number of different services and programs to help them, uh, ranging from an online career connector where they can post jobs and search resumes. Um, and then we have coming up on May 10th, our annual STEM Summit, which STEM is science, technology, engineering, and math. And so this is a pipeline program, meaning uh, we bring out students, educators, uh, K through 12 students and educators to college and university, but also we bring out business leaders um, to talk about career opportunities that are coming up in STEM to prepare the students, to help them get a better idea of what kinds of opportunities there are and things that they might want to pursue. 
Well, I think that's especially important now with technology being, I have, I have a two-year-old and I, at one and a half, he had a tablet. Right, so right. So it's yeah. at their hands. They're always using it. And it's kind of like, well, how, how can they keep going with it beyond, you know, within their career once right. they get older? Right, yeah. There's so many different opportunities. And the jobs of today are not going to be the jobs of tomorrow. So it's important to be constantly thinking forward about what types of positions, what types of skills are going to be needed. And so the, the STEM Summit and a lot of the work of the Tech Council and my role in particular is to help uncover and identify and try to project what those needs are going to be and then have a pipeline to fill those. Needs. And so are the students, um, are you inviting through the schools? Or are you inviting through individuals? Or Yes, all of the above. So we have a lot of uh, schools, colleges and universities, as well as K through 12 that are members of the Technology Council. And uh, so we've invited them, but we partner also with uh, the Science Center and other local organizations that, you know, that are interested in STEM. And so, yeah, we get the word out however we can. Um, something to mention about the Tech Council in general, which I think there's you know, there might be some confusion in the marketplace is that even though we are the Pittsburgh Technology Council, it really is a place for all businesses, whether your technical, you know, your product or service is a technical, technical one, all companies now use technology in their businesses. So whether your company is a bank or a law firm or a high tech application development company, there's a place for all companies. And then also, like Amy was mentioning, she, you know, she started her career in human resources and there's opportunities for individuals within various functional roles within the organization. So marketing or government relations or human resources. So when we talk about the Pittsburgh Technology Council, oftentimes people think, oh, well, I'm not technical or my company isn't technical. And in reality nowadays, you know, technology is so pervasive that anyone and everyone is welcome to be involved in our organization and, you know, we're happy to support them in whatever support way we them. can. Yeah, and I know that every company basically at this point has a website and if they don't, they'll probably want a website and right. it's, it's with social media being fully integrated in so many companies. Right. Um, everybody's using technology on a daily basis. Absolutely. So I can understand that you know, they need resources and this is a really good opportunity for them to learn and meet new people. Right, definitely. And so how can they, how can they get a membership? So to get a membership, you just need to go onto our website, pghtech.org and contact us, fill out a form and someone will contact you and give you some information about how to get involved. And you also do networking events as well. Yes, in fact, um, we do over a hundred events a year in fact, in fact, last night we had one of our largest events, which was our CIO of the Year Awards, where we had somewhere around 700 people come out to celebrate the CIOs and their teams in a variety of industries. And it was, it was a really exciting event. And I don't want to forget to mention that we did, uh, in conjunction uh, with an organization called Red Chair Pittsburgh, which is focused on promoting women in technology. We raised $15,000 for that organization to offer scholarships to our EDGE leadership program summer experience. So that, that was pretty exciting and one of the highlights of the evening. Is there, so is there anything else that I haven't touched base on? You obviously know the Pittsburgh Technology Council a lot better than I do, but is there anything else you'd like to share uh, with our audience about what you do? Um, or the future of the, the tech council. Well, one one thing um, that I'll just leave you with is a lot of people don't even know that their company is a member of the technology council because maybe they're in IT and their marketing or business development people initiated the membership and so they'll say, oh well, I'm not a member of the tech council, and I'll say, yes, you are. Your entire <laughs> corporate staff is a member. So if you're not sure if you're a member or not, you might be and you don't even know it. Then just contact us and we can. If you are a member, we can get you added to our mailing list. And if you're not, then we can open that conversation and explore how we can support you or get you partnered with us. You definitely don't want to pass up on those amazing opportunities. No, you don't. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Andrea. Thank you we'll for We'll bring you back me. out momentarily. Okay. Uh, thank you, Andrea, for being a part of the program. We have a fun Technologies Trivia Contest coming up with both Andrea and Amy. Watch for it when we come back. 
Here's something we bet you didn't know. Nearly half of all cancers can be prevented, mostly by making changes in your diet, controlling your weight, and of course, by not smoking. Visit prevent50.org and get a free 30-day planner filled with tips, recipes, and more. And welcome back. Oh, this is my favorite part, is the trivia part. So we have Andrea and Amy. We're going to be asking them a few trivia questions. Amy and Andrea, you guys already kind of know each other, right? We sure do. Mm -hmm. And that's through the Pittsburgh Technology mm -hmm. Council. Obviously, yes. she's in technology. You're in technology, so it just works out that way, right? Her company mm -hmm. is a very active member of the Tech Council, and so we see one another quite often at events. and. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and we found the, the Tech Council, we've been members for years now, the support that they give and the advice that they give us has really helped us to kind of shape our business goals and find ways to realize them too. So it's, it's been such a wonderful relationship and like and Andrea said, the events are just amazing. Wonderful. Well, I won't keep you guys too long here. So what we're going to do now is a little trivia. Um, I want you to keep the answer in your mind and then I will, you know, I'll give you four Four question or one question, four answers to choose from, and don't don't say it right away because we want to make sure we have both of your answers before I tell you which one's right. All right, so the first one. This is for it's kind of a nostalgic trivia technology uh, game. All right, what is Apple's first pro product? A mouse, a motherboard, a floppy disk, or a computer? All right, go ahead, Andrea. I think a computer. And what about you? I also thought computer. It's actually a motherboard, so oh, okay. I guess you got to start somewhere, right? That's your <laughs> job, <true>. right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, and Dell's first product is a radio, a computer, a telephone, or a beeper. Amy, what do you think? I thought they had radios, but I don't know. Okay, and Andrea? We'll say beeper. All right, this one actually was the computer, so it's kind of oh. a trick question. <laughs> okay. Which came first, the World Wide Web or email? Okay, go ahead, Amy. I'm going to go with email. Andrea? I think the web. It was email, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, they actually used it within Finally the military. <laughs> uh, what is the percentage of the world's current, or what percentage of the world's currency is digital? 60%? 80%, 50%, or 90%? Andrea, I'll have you go first this time. Hmm, that's a great question. Um, I'll say 50%. Okay. I'll go 60? 60, it's actually 80%. Wow. wow. I know, isn't that nuts? Everything's switching over. I never have cash anymore, so I can believe it. Okay, ready? This is really hard. This is going to be very difficult. What is an XY indicator for display systems? A keyboard's arrow keys, a fax machine, a mouse, or a printer? Mm. Amy? The arrow keys? What's your guess? I have no idea, so I'll just second what she said. <laughs> it's actually the mouse. Oh, okay. wow. Which he named because it looks like a mouse, so <laughs> at least that part was easy. It's like the XY where the two buttons. Uh, that's why it's called a mouse. Okay. Well, thank you both I've learned a lot. so much for coming on the show today. I hope you enjoyed yourself, and I hope we got some information about your companies out today. Thank you, thank you Andy. Thank you. thank you, Amy and Andrea, for joining us on another episode of Spotlight on Pittsburgh. And thank you all for watching. Please follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Spotlight on Pittsburgh, and join us again next time when we shine the spotlight on two new guests. Thank you.